Hey guys, even here and in today's video we get a couple of very interesting updates. The first one is about Regan Grimes. So right here you can see his most recent update that he posted on his Instagram. It's just a video of himself posing and he says he's on a mission to add 20 pounds to his frame. He's only eating, sleeping and training. A little bit before this update he also posted that he's becoming a father, that his wife is pregnant and today, actually one hour ago, Jay Cutler posted this video. Apparently Regan went on his podcast, they talked about something for an hour, and the title of this video is Is this the end of the road? End of the road for Regan Grimes. What does this mean? Did he just retire? Did he announce his retirement officially? I was watching the video and I was honestly surprised with what I heard from Regan. Let me play it for you. So how many children are you going to have is the two, question. Two, two, but the thing is, is like, you know, I don't know if like competing is in the cards in between there because I, we don't want them too many years apart, right? I feel like two years, three years. So talk like a little a, bit about the Olympia then. I mean, mm -hmm. tell us what, what the game plan is then. Yeah, so Olympia, I mean, basically now it's just uh, eat, sleep, train, just get, get as much tissue on as I can in this time that I have. Um, my thoughts were, do I do, say, the Arnold, or do I do something five to six weeks before the Olympia and take all this time that I can to, to make as much results as I can? Because if I did that, it's a lot of time. If I can be in a groove for that long, the I have to be up 10, 15 pounds from, from before. I'm so sure. this is for 2025? 2025, yeah. All right, interesting. So first he says he doesn't know if competing is in the cards in the meantime, but maybe he was only talking about his wife competing. Then he says he plans on competing next year, in 2025, so Mr. Olympia this year, that's not happening definitely, it was supposed to, I know Milos was saying that Regan is prepping and that he's gonna do a show later in the year, he wasn't allowed to say which show exactly, but he said it's gonna be one of the shows before the Mr. Olympia, something like Legion or something like that, like uh, European shows and so on, but apparently no, no, it's gonna happen next year, and not even early in the year, but later next year. So we're gonna have to wait for a year and a half more. So it's gonna be like two years completely off the stage for Regan Grimes. And if his wife gets pregnant again in the meantime, maybe even longer. So I guess Jay Cutler's title and the thumbnail weren't a complete clickbait. Maybe there's something to it. Maybe Regan Grimes is not gonna compete again. Maybe he will next year, maybe in a couple of years. We don't know, but we know one thing, it's not gonna happen this year, that's for sure. Now, somebody in the comments said that Regan Grimes looks like a strongman now, and I can kind of see what they mean. I mean, he looks large, he looks really big, he's a taller guy as well, and his body fat percent is obviously higher now than usual. Also, he didn't shave his arms, so that probably has something to do with that as well. But yeah, he's uh, trying to grow, apparently right now he's uh, like 290, which is not heavy enough for him. He needs to be well beyond 300 pounds, and he never went above 300 pounds in his life. And listening to him on this podcast, I don't know if he has the mindset to really truly devote himself completely to bodybuilding like the top guys are doing, you know, like uh, Nick Walker, Derek Lunsford, Hari Japan, Samson Dowd, all these guys are truly devoted to bodybuilding, only bodybuilding all year round, and I don't see that fire, that desire, that passion when Regan is talking about this. We all know he has all the potential in the world, and you know, last year he was actually pretty heavy, pretty big, when he did those European shows, Italy and Spain, compared to his first pro show ever, one cooler pro where he took second, he was, I believe, 225, and here he was 270. So that was still a huge gain, you can see, you can see that he's growing every year, even though he's not putting all the effort into bodybuilding, he's still progressing, he's still growing, but I think this look, this size, this fullness, had more to do with keeping the tissue while dieting, and uh, Milos Sarcha was prepping, and Milos knows how to do these things, like guys who are prepping with him, when they don't have the size to get completely shredded, he keeps them a little bit bigger and fuller, and he gets them just lean enough, and it was enough for Regan to win one of these two shows against Nathan Diasha. You know, you can say that it was a robbery. I think it was, but still it was, I guess, close enough to give them this victory. And that's good enough. And he went to the Mr. Olympia and he was 10 pounds lighter. He was 260 here. They pushed for conditioning, which in my opinion was a mistake. The same one that Quinton made. He pushed for conditioning when he couldn't afford it. 
he lost that pop that he had in those European shows. Apparently, he wanted to be a little bit more conditioned. And, you know, I don't think he could have placed much better. Maybe one spot. If that, I don't know if he could have beat Tony Burton. But still, I prefer his look when he was fuller. And lean enough, if you ask me. This, this wasn't worth it. Yeah, he was a little bit more conditioned, but the fullness that he lost was too much, if you ask me. I think his look uh, at an Italy Pro especially was his best look of all time. Big and full with his frame. He needs it. He definitely needs it. So, I don't know if he's going to compete next year. That's the plan, at least. One of the shows next year, probably later in the year. But maybe even later than that. Who knows what's going to happen in the meantime. Maybe he changes it. Maybe he does an earlier show. Maybe he does the Arnold Classic. We don't know. But apparently, it's not really the end of the road, like Jake Cutler says, but it could be, it could be. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Next, we got Callum Moger posting a physique update that looks really freaking impressive. It looks like he regained all the size he once had when he was at his peak. We don't see the legs, however, they were always kind of smaller than his upper body. I mean, they were decent, they weren't horrible, but his upper body was always more dominant, especially the arms and the chest. But the important thing is, he got it all back. And it's phenomenal to see this. I'm so happy for Callum, I'm sure all of you are as well. You know what he went through, so much trouble, man, so much craziness the past couple of years. And it looks like he's all the way back, finally. So he says, sometimes we all need a time to rebuild ourselves and redefine our purpose. So let's check out his physique. So as you can see, chest looks full, arms are back to their size, shoulders are looking big and round. Look at his side chest. This is looking phenomenal. Hopefully this is an actual comeback for a show. I really hope that's it because he's a pro. He turned pro, he never had a pro debut. So if he keeps it at this pace, yeah, I can definitely see this guy competing and doing pretty well. I mean, can he win a show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia? He absolutely can. Why not? Why not? Much worse bodybuilders qualify for the Mr. Olympia than Callum. I mean, maybe not the way he looks right now, but if he tried, if he focused on progression, if he got the legs back up as well, and if he truly pushed for conditioning, you know, I can definitely see it. I mean, the guy with his genetics, with his shape, and with this mass that he has now again, yeah, this is looking very good. And seeing how well Wesley Wissers did how much they're awarding for that classic shape that Callum also has. He has those classic lines. I think he can do pretty well. And once again, obviously, we can't see his legs. He's hiding them in the shorts, but you can kind of see his quadricep here. And, I mean, his legs are obviously not huge. They're obviously not massive. But they also got some of the size back. They also got a little bit of fullness. And I don't know how hard he's training them, but just the fact that he's eating food now properly and, you know, taking supplements, apparently, uh, he, his legs grew as well. So if he tried, you know, and pushed the legs hard, like really tried to grow them, you know, was willing to go to that dark place in the gym when training legs, I can see him building these legs up to a very, very good point. And again, I can see him winning a smaller Classic Physique Pro show and getting on that Mr. Olympia stage. How awesome would that be to finally see Callum up there, especially after all he's been through lately? So it will be an amazing comeback story. Whatever you guys think about his potential result as a competitor, if he decides to compete, tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, the next thing is not an update, not a news, but just an idea, something that came to me when I was watching this video of uh, Nick Walker posing. I was watching this, uh, this, this video, this routine, and you know, I noticed how hard uh, Nick is struggling to control the midsection, and he was doing a pretty good job with it. He let it go kind of a little bit here and there, but really, like right here, for example, but like overall, he was keeping it in a pretty good control. He's struggling, but he's doing it. And aside from that, I was looking at his entire physique and I thought, wow, this is freaking impressive. I mean, packing this much muscle at this small of a frame, let's put it that way, it was insane. Honestly, I really like Nick's physique. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Nick Walker, I gotta say. Now, I was watching and I was thinking, how well will he do at the Mr. Olympia? Because he was a top three guy and he will probably be again in that top four but after seeing that he almost lost to martin fitzwater 
Where does this put Martin Fitzwater and the Mr. Olympia? It's not like Martin placed second to this because there was nobody in between. Actually, Martin pushed Nick. It was one point decision, so look at this, look at his physique, how crazy this physique is, and even though he is a lot freakier than Martin, I don't think Martin plays so close to him because he had a good midsection, I don't think that's the only thing, I think Martin actually looked very very complete, very dense. Very full and round and symmetrical and proportionate and with a small waist, you know, great abs as well. Very good separation, good conditioning once again. So like with his structure, with his frame, with this much muscle as well. And if he progresses a little bit more until the Mr. Olympia, can he be like one of the top five, top six guys? Can he beat Brandon Curry or Hunter Labrada or like Andrew Jacked or Michael Krizio? I mean, can he beat Nick Walker if he improves a little bit more? Can he actually stand next to Hadi and Derek and Samson? I don't know, man, but Martin can be a breakthrough star at this year's Mr. Olympia. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And for more content like this, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.